Hey guys, I'm Tim with Original Strength, and this week I wanted to show you some tips on how you can troubleshoot your leopard crawl. Now, the leopard crawl is, it is the movement. It is such an amazing body weight movement or calisthenic movement. Uh, it's a you movement where it's just you. It's, it is an amazing movement that just really ties your body together and helps you develop superhuman strength. Superhuman being all the strength that you want to have and be able to express in your body. And so it looks like a cat. So my first tip for you is imagine what a cat looks like when they crawl and then let your body try to imitate or emulate that imagination. So honestly, a lot of times if you imagine a movement, your brain just is able to access that movement so much better. So pretend you're a cat and chances are you're going to move more cat-like. Now, some, some troubleshooting tips. Oftentimes I'll see people try to bring the idea of exercise into this movement and this is just a it's a natural movement and to try to combine the exercise world and the movement world is not always optimal what I mean by that is I'll see people try to keep their neck and spine neutral or in their neck in line with their spine and they end up crawling like this and you'll see people put a water bottle on their back where they're trying not to spill it so they're trying to crawl super still and stable and really it's almost robotic and sometimes you'll actually see it looking very robotic. The problem with that is, is that is kind of misapplying an idea in, in, uh, inside the exercise world into a movement. And that, well, that's not, that's not fluid movement and it's not powerful movement. Power comes from fluidity. So, and so does strength. So when you leopard crawl, you want your eyes and head up on the horizon and your butt down below your head and there's movement, it's fluid. There's movement in the spine, there's movement in the hips. And that's natural, that's how we're designed. Our spine is designed to move. You'll, if you actually watch somebody fluidly leopard crawl, you'll see the spine actually moves almost like a serpent. So there's movement, natural movement in the leopard crawl, and that's good movement. So that's, that's one of my tips, is don't try to bring exercise into that movement because it's it's not the same thing and it's not going to be as beneficial good better best sure it can be good but it's definitely not going to get you to better best as far as uh tying your body together and it's just allowing you to feel really really good the other thing i often see is people will overstride and what i mean is they'll try to take too long of a reach with their legs and it ends up doing all kinds of weird things to their hips uh, and, and it scrunches them up a little bit. So my biggest tip there would be to shorten your stride so that you're not pushing your butt up in the air or dropping your head or causing your hips to spill over. So if you shorten your stride and take small steps with your legs, you'll build up the strength in your center to eventually be able to take longer steps without losing that posture or the relationship of your butt and your head. Which takes us to the next thing I see a lot is you'll see the head drop and the butt come up. And I call it, that's really a bear crawl. To me, when the head drops and the butt pops up, I call it a bear crawl. And what that means is, is that the center is not, it's either <clears throat> too tired or it was never strong enough to begin with. So <clears throat> you want to keep the butt down below the head because that's where your strength is. It's just on reflexively. So you'll notice that if I'm here, this is kind of, it's a little bit on, but like I can, I can feel that it's not really tight. But if I'm here, it's on. So just by keeping the butt down below the head, I'm causing my center to reflexively fire more. And that is a great way to build strength and resiliency throughout your whole body. Keeping your butt down connects your X makes you insanely strong, gives you access to your strength. The other thing I see is, and this one's hard to demonstrate, but sometimes you'll see ipsilateral crawling, which means same side crawling. And that's kind of like that. Usually that means that what you're doing can be, it's, it's too high of a movement or too stressful for your nervous system. And so the reason that this could become too high of a movement for some people is because now there's tension throughout the entire system and it may be too much tension because they don't really own their contralateral pattern. 
The fix for that would be just to put your knees on the ground and work on getting your contralateral pattern here and getting all those reps in to really let the brain feel comfortable with this so that it maintains this pattern when you pick the knees up. And, and it's okay if you have to crawl on your hands and knees. It's a, it's a fantastic, phenomenal movement that does amazing things for your, your whole body. So don't, don't feel like you need to skip that step or, or you should ne not be having to do that step. I often crawl on my hands and knees because it feels wonderful, but I know it is really, really good for my brain and my body. So don't, don't feel like it's, it's no crawl of shame to be on your hands and knees. Um, and it will help you get to the point where you can crawl on your hands and feet fluidly without losing your contralateral pattern. So those are just some tips. I'll show you one more thing. The biggest thing is notice that when I'm crawling on my hands and knees, my eyes and head are up on the horizon, my butt's down below my head. When I leopard crawl, the posture should be the same. So watch this, my knees come up, my eyes and head are still on the horizon, my butt is still down below my head, my back is still flat. So hardly anything changes from here to here. The posture is the same. And again, this is an amazing movement. If you wanna feel great in your own body and you wanna be ridiculously strong, get good at leopard crawling. Anyway, that's my tip this week. Give that a shot. I'm Tim with Original Strength, and we'll see you next time. To learn more, consider attending an Original Strength certification. Visit originalstrength.net to register.